What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Learning Roblox Studio. In today's episode, we are going to be going over the scoring points chapter. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy the content, make sure you guys hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development videos. I also have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me or gain access to a lot of scripts that to make my other videos, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon. You guys can go check it out and support me if you're feeling kind enough. Additionally, there's a link down below in the description to the Roblox documentation on the chapter we're going to be covering today if you guys like to follow along as always you guys can go down there and read the page along with us with that being said let's get right into it scoring points getting started in the previous courses you made a variety of game features including fading platforms and deadly lava this course ties these together into a playable game where players see who can stay alive the longest every second they stay alive a point will be added to their score i'm going to load up the world from the previous episode as we normally do and here we go we have all these parts laid out setting up First up, you'll need to set up a scene for your game. Duplicate the fading platforms you made in the previous course and make players compete to stay on the board of platforms for as long as possible. You can also use deadly lava to kill players when they fall off the platforms or just let them fall to their doom. Make sure you place a spawn location somewhere where players can jump onto the platforms to start playing. We also have an image of the example of what they're using, so we're going to kind of recreate this a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of our previous parts besides the lava and besides the platform, and I'm going to delete all those. I will also delete that one as well and now we are left with two parts the lava floor and the fading platform so what i'm going to do now is i will expand the lava platform out very large i think that's pretty good then what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the fading platform and i'm going to make that a little bit smaller so that's pretty good and then i will line it up a little bit more like that so it's a little bit in the corner and now we are going to duplicate a lot of the fading platforms so the way of course to duplicate it is you hit Control d there we go we got another copy of that and i'll move it over a little bit additionally i want these to be relatively on the same y level if we really cared about it we could get to position and then copy this y level so like let's say for instance let's check whatever this position is so it's 0.5 so we could go into the position and then we could say 0.5 if we really cared about it that much but honestly i don't so now i'm going to select both of the fitting platforms i'm going to duplicate both of them and then i'm going to move them over a little bit more and then let's go ahead and select all four of them duplicate them one more time and then move them over a little bit and move them down so they're around the same y level and that is pretty decent now of course i'm going to delete these two extras that we have and now that we have it set up like this we can easily select all of these and then watch this we can now duplicate them and move them over and now we have another row easily created for us. So that's why I kind of did it this exact way. So now we only have to copy them a couple of times, like maybe three or four more times, and we should have this whole thing done easily. So let's duplicate this row, move it over a little bit, move it down so they're the same Y level, duplicate it once again, move it over again, move it down, pretty good, and do that one more time, and we should be all good to go. Go. All right, let's take a little overhead look, and that looks pretty decent. Not bad at all, and that was super easy to create. The final thing that we actually have to do is insert a spawn location sort of in the center of our fitting platforms. Also, they really don't talk about organization at all, but I'm going to do this instead. Inside of the workplace, let's go ahead and insert a folder, and we can rename this to fading plat forms and then we can just get all of our fading platforms and put them directly inside of that folder now we can close the folder so we can actually see all the things in our workspace without having to scroll through a bunch of the fading platform parts once again we have to insert a spawn location so let's go ahead and do that and let's move this around a little bit is that centered yeah i think that's pretty centered not too bad let's of course make sure that it is anchored and it is anchored and it can collide so that works perfectly fine if we want to test this we can also start up our game to make sure that the jumps aren't too big or too small and actually this does look pretty good but it's actually going to be pretty hard to get to some of these jumps so we could move them a little bit closer honestly though since this is just testing i don't exactly care to move them that much closer what we could also do is we could select every single one of these and instead of making them closer together we could just expand these to be a little bit larger and we could do that for like every other row so we could do it just like this we can make these a little bit larger oh we forgot one right there so we can make those a little bit larger and that should fill in the gaps and make it so people could actually jump on them i would probably move them a little bit closer if i actually cared about this but of course this is just for learning so it really doesn't matter i think the layout's good enough it's definitely good enough to kind of go through this course with and test out all the stuff that we're going to be creating next up is player points roblox has a built-in leaderboard for showing player stats when you set a player's points through the leaderboard it'll show up on the right side of the screen in the game you'll learn more customizable ways to display information in later courses but the leaderboard is the simplest way of making a visible scoring system in roblox it's best to put 
scripts which set up a game state into the server script service. Scripts placed there will automatically run when the game starts. So let's go into server script service, which is right down here, right above server storage. And let's click the plus icon and of course, insert a brand new script. And we're gonna name this script setup points. As always, we're gonna delete the print statement that's inside of here as well. So now, listening for players. In Roblox, a service is an object which performs a range of useful functions. The player service has an event called player added that you can use to set up points for each player who joins the game. You can access services with the get service function in the game object. Game is a variable accessible from anywhere which contains everything in your game. Okay, that was probably so confusing. Don't worry. I don't know why they worded out like that. Let's just kind of go through this demonstration and you guys probably will be able to comprehend it by the end of this. So we're going to create a variable inside of our script and that's going to be players. Now, this variable is going to be a little bit different than all the other ones that we have created before. And we're actually going to make the first letter of this variable capitalized. So we're going to name it players and we're going to set the value of that to game, then semicolon. Now we're going to use a function which is get service and then inside of here we have to type what service we actually want to get and this actually pops up with a bunch of different services which we can already get but of course the service that we're going to be using is players so you might be wondering why are we not following the camel case format right here for this variable and the reason for that is because the best practice for every single service that you get in a script is always to make the first letter of every single service capitalized so of course normally we write our variables such as dog equals one we always write our variables with the first letter being lowercase and that is following the camel case practice but for services you ignore the camel case practice and you capitalize that and this is so that you can easily differentiate services from most of the other variables so now below the variable that we just created we're now going to make a function and the function is going to be called on player added so we're going to say local function on player added and then inside the parentheses we are going to take an argument called player so now we have the blank function created and then below that we are going to get an event from the players services and we are going to connect that to the function above so we're going to say players by calling the variable then we're just going to use a dot which we can now access properties from an event just like how we did in the last episode the event that we're going to be looking for this time though is going to be called player added that's the reason that we're using the player services because player services actually has a specific event known as player added because that manages everything to do with players for the most part so then as usual we are going to colon connect that and then we're just going to connect that to the on player added function above create a stats folder to make a player's points display in the leaderboards all you need to do is create a new folder in their player object called leader stats and put their points in there new objects can be created from within a script via the instance.new function now we want to create a new folder object using instance.new folder storing the result in a new variable called leader stats so let's go back inside of our function and let's create a brand new variable and that is going to be called leader stats so local leader stats equals and now we're going to use the instance dot new which is a function and then we're going to put quotation marks and now we have a lot of different things which we can actually create a brand new instance of but we are going to create a brand new instance of a folder so now we have a folder as the value of a variable and the name of the variable is leader stats and of course if we use if we type in leader stats and then a period we can now access properties of this variable which is a folder so a folder has a property of the name and we actually want to set the name of the folder to leader stats in all lowercase make sure this is actually one thing that's really important make sure you spell leader stats the exact same way that i do or they do on their documentation and make sure that it is all lowercase otherwise you're going to run into issues and this will not work so if you're a little bit confused by this imagine this you're on your desktop on your computer and you create a brand new folder that is what instance.new is doing we're creating a brand new folder and we're not doing anything to it but we are setting that folder to a variable so we can then access it and use some of the properties and work with that folder later so now we want to actually set the name of that specific folder on your computer the name that we're going to set that folder to is leader stats so imagine you're just renaming any ordinary folder on your computer that works perfectly the next thing we want to do is we want to also do leader stats once again and this time we want to set the parent property to the player so remember when we call this function we're accepting a player as one of our arguments and then we're going to use that down here so that we can set the parent of that folder to the player meaning that the player will now own this specific folder if you're a little bit confused by this one way to look at this imagine you create a folder on your computer you named it leader stats and now you want to move the folder from your desktop folder to your documents folder if we want to move it to our documents folder we would set the parent to documents and that's exactly sort of what you're doing here 
of course, rather than setting it to documents, you're putting the folder inside of the player and the player then owns the folder, but hopefully that explanation simplifies it and makes it a lot easier to understand. Points value. The leaderboard system reads any value in the leader stats folder and displays whatever it finds. To add a stat which will track a player's points, a new int value object can be parented to the leader stats folder. The name of the value object will be displayed alongside its current value. Now what we're going to do, go back inside of the function and underneath when we set the parent, we are going to create a new variable and this variable is going to be called points. So we're going to say local points equals. And once again, we are going to do instance dot new. And this time we are going to create an int value object. We can now access this object property. So we're going to say points dot name equals. We can name it whatever we want, but let's go ahead and just name it points for this example. If we were making a simulator or something, the name of this would be coins or gems or whatever that specific simulator's currency is going to be. And then of course the value, we want to set the value of this to zero because we want when the player joins, we want them to start with zero coins or zero points. And since it's an int value, it can only be numbers. Int means numbers. You can't actually use strings or characters, which is letters or words in this. So the only values that it can be set to is some sort of number. Then what we want to do is we want to move the brand new int value object that we created into the leader stats folder that we created earlier. So if this is a little bit confusing, imagine earlier we made a folder on your desktop named leader stats, and then we moved it into the documents folder, which is what we did with this parent right here. Now let's just say we created a blank text file. We set the name of that text file to points, and then inside of the text file, we just wrote zero. Now what we want to do is we want to move that text file into the folder that we created earlier and moved into our documents. So what we're going to do is we're going to say points.parent, and we are going to move that into the leader stats folder. Just like that. That's exactly how we do it. I'm really hoping that these examples that I'm giving are helping people and not making it more confusing. Let me know in the comment section how they were. Hopefully it's good. Now we want to test our game and we should see the leaderboard appear at the top right with the names of your players and the points in the score next to them. And as we see, we have monster and we have the amount of points, which is currently zero. Counting time. Each player should earn a point for every second they are alive. A while loop and the wait function can be used to update the value of points every second. So at the end of our script, we are going to create a while loop. Of course, we're going to make an infinite while loop. So we're just going to say while true do. And remember what I told you in the last episode, always make sure that you have a task dot wait function inside of your while loop, or you're most likely going to crash your studio. So we're just going to wait for one second. And that's exactly what we want to do. Player list to run code for every player in the game. You'll need to iterate through the array of players returned by the get players function. That might be a little confusing. What that means is that just means that you'll need to go through every single player that's in the game. And the way that we're going to get all those players is by using a get players function, which will return an array. And then we're going to go through that entire array. An array is a list of items stored in order. Each item can be accessed by its index position starting from one. You can get the length of an array by prefixing it with hashtag. Let's go ahead and create a new variable. And this is going to be named player list. We're going to use the players variable that we made earlier, and then we're going to use a function from the players, and that's going to be called get players. And what that's going to do is it's going to return a table of all presently connected player objects. Then what we want to do is we want to create a for loop. So we're going to say for the variable that we're going to use this time is current player, and we're going to set that to one because the index position begins at one. And then the for loop, we don't want to end until we go through the entire list. So how do we figure out how many players are connected to the server? Well, we use the hashtag, and then we use the player list list and that will actually figure out how many players are in the game and that is where the loop will end. So let's say for instance 10 players are in the game that's equivalent to just writing 10 right here but of course this number always needs to change based on the amount of players that are currently in the game. And then finally we need to type out do hit enter and there is our for loop. Awarding points. To award a point to each player in the loop you'll need to get the player out of the array and add one to the points object stored in their leader stats folder. Accessing array values. Objects stored in array are accessed using square brackets. For instance the first First item in the player list array can be accessed with the player list bracket one. If you write player list bracket current player in the for loop, you can move through each player in the list with every iteration of the loop. So just for an example of what they're talking about, if we said, for instance, that we want to do print something, right? Let's say print player list and then bracket one. That would get the first player in the player list. And if there's only one player connected, that would literally just be you. So this would be getting the first player that's in this list that gets returned by get players. If we use two, that would just get the second player and so on. So what we're going to do is we're now going to create a local 
player variable and that's going to be equal to player list and that's going to be equal to player list and now inside of the brackets we are going to do current player now remember current player is going to always be equal to whatever iteration the for loops on so when the for loop starts it's going to be one then two then three and it'll go up to however many players are in your game so when this loop goes through the first time it's going to be player list and the current player will be one let's just say that it's one for example and that'll get the first player that's in the list then it'll go to two and that'll get the second player that's in the list hopefully that makes it a little less confusing the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a points variable so we're going to say local points and we're going to set that to player because now we have the player then we're going to get the leader stats of the player and then we are going to get points now the reason that we're able to do player dot leader stats is because we set the parent of leader stats to the player when they first join and then we also set the parent of points to leader stats as well so we're able to easily access this by using the player object then we go inside of the player object and we get leader stats and then we go inside of leader stats and we get points we're able to do that because we parented all these things to each other. So now, once we have the points value, we are actually going to do some math with that. We're going to say points.value equals, and then we're going to change the amount of points that the player has. So we're going to say points.value plus one. So that'll take the current amount of points that the player has, for example, zero, and then add one to it. So zero plus one equals one, and that'll change the player's points to one, then it'll keep adding one to it every single time. Let's go ahead and test our game and see if that works as it should. So we see one, two, three, four, five, that works perfectly. Awesome. Listening for characters. The goal of the game is to see who can stay alive the longest, so players who die will need to have their points reset to zero. You'll need to get the character model for the player in order to detect when they have died. This model is only added to the game after the player object has been loaded and you can use the character added event to listen for when the character is ready to use. A little bit confusing, don't worry. What we're going to do is above our on player added function, we are going to create a brand new function called on character added. So we're going to say local function on character added added we're going to accept the character and the player as an argument although we included player in the on character added functions parameters the actual character added event only returns the character not the associated player okay i'm not gonna lie they are getting really confusing and really in depth with these tutorials this should be a little bit more advanced especially the explanation that they're giving this is probably going to confuse a lot of beginners but just hold on and keep going with me to pass the player object as well use an anonymous function for the event connection you guys will have absolutely no idea what an anonymous function is and like i said i don't even know why they're going this in depth with this right now they should have made this a lot simpler but let's just go with it underneath points.leader stats inside of the on player added function we are going to say player dot and this time we are going to get the character added function we're going to connect that and then we're going to create a function inside of these parameters right here so we're kind of creating a new function inside of here and the parameter that we're going to take for this function is going to be character. Then right in between these two parentheses right here, hit enter. And there you go. It's made exactly how it should be. Now we're going to call the on character added function and we're going to pass through the character and the player. So where do we get the player from? We actually get the player from whatever is passed to the on player added function. And that's how we get the player. And then from the player, we get the character added event. And this event actually provides us the character, which is why we created a function inside of here to accept the character. And then we call the other function inside of this function and we pass through both the character and the player. Definitely a little bit more complicated, but hopefully you understand that. Handling player death. When a player dies, their humanoid automatically fires a died event. You can use this event to find out when to reset their points. The humanoid is found inside of the character model, but the contents of that model are only assembled as the player spawns. To make your code safely wait for the humanoid object to load, use the wait for child function. You can call it on any parent object, passing the string name of the child that you're going to wait for. So now inside of the on character added function, we're going to create another variable and this is going to be called humanoid. We're going to set that to the character and now we're going to use the function wait for child and then inside of here we're going to wait for the humanoid child now this is almost equivalent to typing out fine first child if you're familiar with that function or it's the same exact thing as just doing character dot humanoid but the reason that we're using wait for child is because the humanoid is not always accessible let's say for instance if a player just dies the humanoid might not actually be accessible because the character is dead and it's waiting to be respawned so waiting for the child will mean that the script won't throw any errors and it'll actually wait to be able to access the humanoid also errors are really bad and they could 
could cause your game to crash. That's why we want to avoid them at all costs. The function you need to connect to the dive event is very short and will only ever be needed here. So you can use an anonymous function once again. Now that we have the humanoid, we are going to get the died event. So we're going to say humanoid dot died, and that's going to get the died event. We're going to connect that to a brand new function. And also if you're having issues like creating these sort of functions, the way that I do it is once you have connect, you type out function, then you hit the parentheses, then you click the arrow key once to the right and you hit enter and that will work out perfectly for you. So now that we have this brand new function, we're going to get the points of the player. So we're going to say local points, similar to how we did below in the wild true loop. We're going to set the value of that to player dot leader stats dot points and that'll get the points. Then we want to change the value of the points. So we're going to say points.value and we're going to set that to zero. What we're doing is once the character is actually added to the game, we're going to wait to get the humanoid and then we're going to get the humanoid. And then we're going to listen for the died event to fire on that humanoid. We're going to connect a function to it. And what we're going to do with this function is we are going to set the points of that player to zero, effectively resetting that player's points to what they started at the beginning of the game. So now we're going to go ahead and test this out and see if this works. So we have have two points three points let's go ahead and fall through with five points six points and we can see our points have been reset to zero and that works perfectly checking the player even when dead, players keep earning points, which is hardly in the spirit of the game. The code needs to check if the players are alive before awarding points. You'll need to start by defining an attribute in the onPlayerAdded function, which can be used to check whether the player is alive. At this point, the player is not yet alive and spawned as their character model still needs to be added. Attributes allow you to customize objects in Roblox with your own data. An attribute consists of a name and a value. You can create one on any object using the setAttribute function. So inside of the onPlayerAdded function, right below the leader step, and right above the character added event, we're going to get the player variable. Then we're going to call the set attribute function. The attribute that we're going to set is called is alive. And this could be anything that you want. Is alive isn't like a special attribute or anything. You can name that whatever you actually want to. And then we're going to set the value of that by hitting comma. And we're going to set the value of that to false. Once the player's character model respawns, the value of is alive needs to be changed to true so that the player can start earning points once again. So inside of on character added, the first thing that we're actually going to do is we're going to once again, get the player and call the set attribute function on it and we're going to do the exact same thing so the attribute that we're going to set is called is alive and instead of setting it to false we're actually going to set that to true because the player is now alive then inside of the died function at the very bottom we're going to do the exact same thing but set it to false this time so get the player call the set attribute function the attribute is going to be called is alive and we are going to set that to false indicating that the player has died and the player should no longer earn points now of course we actually need to use this attribute so finally is alive should be checked before any point is awarded in the while loop at the end of the script the get attribute function takes the name of an attribute and returns the value so inside of the for loop right below where we actually get the player we're going to say if and then we're going to use the player and call a function on it called get attribute then we have to specify what attribute we're looking for and we're looking for is alive then we can hit enter and there we go now let's go ahead and move this code inside of here so now what we're doing is we're going through all the players we're finding the specific player then we're checking if the player has the is alive attribute set to true and then if they do we're going to give them some points this is the exact same as saying is alive equals true you can also do that if that's less confusing for you and also if we say is alive equals false that's the equivalent of also saying if not player get attribute is alive so this means false and this means true. Hopefully that's easier for you to understand. When I was first learning, I like to do equal true because that was a lot easier to understand. Now test our game out and you should find that players earn points every second they're alive and stays at zero when they're not alive. So as we can see, we have six points. Let's go ahead and die. We can see we're now at zero points. And once we respawn, we actually start gaining points once again. And the game is working exactly how we want it to. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this chapter. If you guys did enjoy, as always, make sure you guys smash the like button and hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development videos. Additionally, if you guys would like to support me and gain access to a lot of the scripts that I make in my other videos, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon. You guys can go check it out and support me if you're feeling kind enough. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.